Hey, Life Raft peeps, Michael Besson. You know, I, um, I have had a message brewing in my heart for about three days. I've been praying on it, thinking about it, and it may be the single most important message I've ever had God speaking in my heart. I pray right now that I just stay in my heart. I don't have any notes, I don't have anything, but I think it could be possibly the most important message you've ever heard in your entire Christian life. Wow, that's that's a big mantle. <laughs> that's a big goal. I think might I think it might be that big. So one of the commonalities that I hear in 30 years of executive coaching is people don't think they hit their potential. And I started thinking about this thing and the Holy Spirit began to bubble up in me and I started to hear this term, the destiny killers. You know, at the very foundation, in the very beginning of man, in the garden, we had the first death, destiny death that ever happened. It's interesting because the enemy uses a lot of tactics, but I'm gonna suggest to you, after watching a video, Denzel Washington's testimony of being a born-again believer and giving his history of his life, it all began to just unfold inside of my soul about my life and everybody's life I've ever seen. There was a commonality of stealing, robbing our destinies. There was sp specific tactics that the enemy used to rob you of your potential of your calling, of your purpose. And so I want you to think about the garden. It's probably the very first, it's not probably, it is, the very first place gossip ever seeped into the heart of man. The enemy was gossiping about God. He was quoting things out of context. Context is everything. He was distorting realities. He was drawing false conclusions. He was stealing a destiny. You know, I started to think about how we're all born with a generational iniquity, three to four generations on both sides, impregnates our heart with cellular memories. It impregnates our soul. And each and every one of us has this thing called generational iniquity that it's, de it's designed since the garden is to steal your destiny. You know, when you go through school and you might be growing up like me, and I'm going to use a lot of me here, my own journey and all the places, I allowed the brokenness of others, the brokenness of the world, the traps of the enemy to steal my destiny. See, I think my story is just like Denzel Washington's. I think it's, uh, well, I wish it was, huh? He's a pretty cool guy. <laughs> I didn't mean to say that, you know, I'm as cool as Denzel because that's, that's not happening here. But what I am telling you is Denzel's story is yours. My story is yours. And if you watch till the very end, you're going to see the breakthrough moment where this never has to happen again. And so I thought about how I was brought up and the ways that I was brought up and the belief systems I was impregnated with, the false religion I was indoctrinated to, which gave me a viewpoint an opinion and a perspective of who God was. All of it designed by the enemy to steal my destiny. What is your destiny? I can tell you what it is. There, since the moment of conception, God says he knew you before you were even knitted together in your mother's womb. He knows the very numbers of hairs on your head. And he knows your name before it was given to you. He knows literally everything about you. And there was this place, this purpose, this profession, this lane he created you to walk in. You know why so many people are not fulfilled? They do not know their lane. Part of my heart, my passion for being in ministry is to help you discover your lane. You see, you were, maybe you're for, you are designed for business. Maybe you are designed to be a school teacher. Maybe you are designed to be a janitor. But I'm going to tell you something. If you're not fulfilled at an epic level, you're just part of the destiny death 
cycle. So let me just give you some ideas here. You know, I uh, I grew up in the suburb of Detroit, first East Detroit, but then the suburb, and I my, I don't know any men until I'm 11 years old. And I get brought into an alcoholic family. He buys a bar and a pool hall, and I grew up there. Now, I don't know if you've ever grown up at a bar and a pool hall, and by growing up there, I mean I lived up on top of it. I was actually very embarrassed and ashamed it put me into a drug dealer, you know, lifestyle and all these things were happening. And then one day, because since the time I can remember, I had a, a little bit of a hunger, even in a false religion, to know who God was. And one day I asked Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior, and it was so big. It was so real. It was uh, 15 years old and the entire ceiling lit up. The Holy Spirit came into my heart at 15 and it was just a game changer. But you see, that doesn't stop your destiny from dying. You see, now you're valuable. Now you crossed over into a different eternity place, but very few of us ever get Lord and Savior. See, Savior just is about your eternal destination. But oh man, when God is your guidance, your counselor, your comforter, when he's your best friend, when he lives inside of you and speaks to you, when he, when he t causes you to ride through the dip, most difficult things of life with far greater ease and always going up and up and up. See, that is your destiny lane. So how come so many of us get robbed? And I thought back, my goodness gracious, Denzel, He's talking about, man, he accepted the Lord, but he wasn't ready to live for him. He wasn't ready to surrender. See, his destiny was about to die. Could you imagine what a guy like Denzel Washington could have done, sold out to the Holy Spirit, the power of that man's communication skills, the, his influence? What's your destiny, man? I think about high school and all the girls I wanted to date and those that uh, didn't know Jesus and how I would hide it. I think about the Navy years in my life. These are probably your years too. You probably have different names for them, college, military, whatever. And I thought about, you know, I'm trying to learn how to be a man here. I'm 17 to 21. I'm in the military. This isn't the, this isn't the place to show up as a believer. I got to be a man. I got to work out. I got to be strong. I got to be a sailor. Destiny. Death. See, see, the enemy is always trying to rob us of our deepest destiny place with God, which is the lane of fulfillment, man. So then I get out of the military and I have this crisis of circumstances. Who am I? What am I? I'm not in the military anymore. And I go into ministry school for about a year. And then I go, man, I'm pretty good at business. And I go down this business lane for decades never once fulfilled. Oh, the huge wins, huge losses, big time stuff, recognition on stages, uh, private jets, you know, first class airlines, some of the most famous people in the world, blah, blah, blah. And you know what I would do at the end of the night? I would go, is this it? You see, I didn't know about the destiny killers of life, right? I didn't know it. In 1999 was an epic shift in my life. It's 20 years ago. And I lost virtually everything that was important to me and my private jet buddies weren't calling on me anymore. And, and uh, I lost a publicly traded company. And when I say I lost, I can tell you what really happened. I blew it up myself. I just didn't know it. See, the internet bubble had burst and rock star executives pivoted. And I was too broken to even think about any of that. So here I am. I walk into a church January 7th of 2000, recommit my life to Jesus. But the destiny killers are just all around the church. They're all around the hallways. They're in the parking lot. They're in my bedroom. And for about three or four months, and God bless this interesting pastor, he says, Michael, there's a destiny for you. 20 years ago.
you're supposed to be in ministry. I could tell there is a pastoral, there is a ministry leader mantle on you. You need to come in. And, and then I was introduced to the realities of leadership at Christian leadership ways and thinking and death traps. And this person to this day did something very unwise. Actually, not even to me. It was a celebrity in town and he had a squabble with him. And I was ordered to never speak to this celebrity again. I went and fasted for three days and God didn't tell me to stop talking, stop loving this guy, so I didn't. But let me tell you what really happened because it's not about that situation. It's about I don't know who stole your destiny, but the enemy's tr been trying to do it since the garden. And he's really, really good at it. And you know what that one cost me? 20 years of ministry. 20 years of broken thinking decisions. Stinking thinking decisions is what Zig Ziglar used to call them. And what the enemy was doing is going, well, I lost Michael to eternity, but I sure don't want him to ever hit his destiny. Hey, what is it that you have allowed to steal and rob and kill your destiny? You know, recently, uh, none of y'all know who it is because I know a ton of leaders. Uh, some people that I deeply admire just did the stupidest things. And I thought, I'm gonna pass this class. I'm gonna love them, I'm gonna forgive them. I had always observed, and, and this, this, I want you guys to realize you don't know who this is. Just erase whatever ideas you have. I want you to get the point. You see, I recognize the flaws in me. I recognize the pride in me. I recognize my shortcomings. And y'all never, ever should slip away from the Lord for any minister, including me. You see, because we're all flawed, broken human beings surrendering our junk, allowing the Holy Spirit to come in, clean us up, allowing our hearts to become whole, allowing us to become better at loving and forgiving and accepting one another. And I got news for you. There's a lot of leaders, man. When you know them behind the scenes, it's downright freaky. And I'm talking world leaders. I don't, you know, I'm gonna go off on a big shot thing here, but I got some pretty famous people in my phone that I'm really good friends with. I know their deepest, darkest stuff. You know what? They still bring value. They still deliver in a secular sense. But I want you to know the same thing happens with Christians and, and, and churches. So I want to ask you a question. Which church wounded you so bad it robbed your destiny? Which Christian leader did something so stupid to you it robbed your identity? Because here's what you need to do. You need to forgive that person, pray for that church, forgive whatever that was. Which distorted religion were you grow, did you grow up in that was trying to steal your identity, your destiny? See, our identity is the finished work of Christ. Our identity is walking out wholeness and leaving generational iniquity behind. Our destiny is God created you for a purpose, man. And don't you dare let ministers or churches or family or ex-spouses or your, the people that you counted on, childhood friends, don't you dare let their brokenness steal your identity. Don't you dare get robbed of your destiny. You know the problem and the challenge with most of us right now? The whole world is being shaken to its core. This is the great awakening, people. This is right before the tribulation, right before rapture. I don't care what you believe in. You know, pre, mid, post, doesn't matter. We're all about ready to go through hell because the next worldwide conflict is before the seven years. and One-fourth of the world is destroyed. Isn't just about right now time to reclaim your destiny. Isn't right now about the time you need to forgive and get washed clean of all the crap, the destiny stealers, the, the thieves that you've allowed, that I've allowed into my life? Isn't it time we just forgive them, love them, 
pray for them. I don't care. I'm speaking to somebody here with an ex-spouse. I'm speaking to somebody here with an ex-husband. Maybe you're still married. I'm, I'm talking about adult children that are jacking up your life. I'm talking about ministers that you counted on, churches you believed in. All of it is the same story. It's the enemy from the garden trying to steal the destiny of mankind. I got news for you, man. This is the great awakening. It is time to reclaim your destiny. It is time to send away the chaos in your soul. It is time to embrace wholeness like you never have. It's time for you to impact the world around you in whatever lane God created you to, to be in. I don't think there's a more important message for the church right now. My passion at Life Raft Ministry is to help you walk out wholeness. My passion for ministries worldwide is to wake up during this great awakening, to recognize the era that we are in, to recognize this moment in mankind, to say to yourself, I don't care what's been done to me, I forgive, and you just let it go. And all of a sudden, the peace that surpasses all understanding starts to come in. The wisdom of God starts to come in. The realities of the times that we are living in starts to come in. You don't live in fear, anxiety, and worry. Listen to me. Run away from your fake religions. Run away from your fake churches. Run into the arms of Jesus. Ask him to come in and forgive all the debt you're holding against everybody else. And embrace the truth of what he called you to be since the very day you were born. I know I can help you in any way at Life Wrap Ministries. You just, uh, you reach out. There's a whole team of us um, being raised up to minister to people in humility and love and to, to walk out wholeness, to facilitate the Holy Spirit. This is never gonna be a ministry based on Christian personalities. This is never going to be a ministry based on some hierarchy. This is about people loving people and helping you walk out your wholeness. Listen, man, I love you. It's Michael Besson from Life Raft Ministries. Let's go get your destiny. Blessings.